Prior to attempting to set up or operate your Nuvair Nitrox system, take the time to read the manual completely. Learn how to operate your system properly by getting instruction from a person qualified to train you in the correct techniques for using this equipment. Before you fill any cylinders with nitrox, be sure to set up a proper nitrox log for recording the information on each cylinder you fill. The Voyager system consists of a low pressure compressor, an air after cooler, and a volume tank and filtration to feed air to a semi-permeable membrane. Once nitrox is produced, it is compressed by the high pressure compressor. The system may also include an optional refrigerated air dryer. The membrane is the heart of the system. It removes the nitrogen from ordinary air to give you precisely the nitrox mixture you want. The Voyager will pump nitrox at a maximum pressure of 3,800 pounds per square inch and up to 40% oxygen content. In addition to pumping nitrox, the Voyager can also be used to pump ordinary compressed air at pressures up to 4,500 PSI. When properly operated and maintained, the Voyager provides breathing gas that meets the Compressed Gas Association standards. The Voyager should be installed in a well-ventilated space. If you use storage cylinders, your system must be properly set up to ensure that you do not deliver the wrong gas to the storage banks. Nitrox delivered to an unsuspecting diver could cause oxygen toxicity at depth. Air delivered to a diver expecting nitrox could cause decompression sickness. Before starting your compressor, always be sure to check to ensure that the lubricant levels are correct. Use only the approved Nuvair lubricants if you need to top up the lubricants. When your system is first installed, be sure to check to be certain that the flywheel is turning in the correct direction. Bump the starter momentarily to check for proper rotation. Check to see that the low pressure feed air switch is in the off position. Screw the low pressure feed air regulator adjustment knob counterclockwise until it is loose. There are two oxygen analyzers on the Voyager, the permeate analyzer and the fill analyzer. The high pressure compressor must be turned on before you can calibrate the permeate analyzer. At altitudes above sea level, the analyzer must be calibrated using a correction factor. See the fill analyzer manual for proper calibration at altitude. Open the fill whip on the high pressure compressor until you can just hear air hissing out. Insert a clean rag in the yoke to act as a muffler. If you have an OSHA approved fill station, you can also vent through the whip at the fill station. Turn on the high pressure compressor and drain any moisture that is in the system. Set the dial of pressure gauge for the desired fill pressure for the cylinder you will fill. Use the valve on the fill whip to regulate the pressure so that the high pressure compressor is delivering a consistent 1500 to 2000 PSI. Calibrate the permeate analyzer by turning the knob on the analyzer until the display reads 20.9%. Calibrate the fill analyzer to room air while the system is operating by removing the cap, waiting 15 seconds, and calibrating to room air. To start out, only connect one fill whip to a single cylinder. Don't turn the cylinder on yet. We'll use the second whip to control the high pressure compressor outlet pressure, so don't connect this to a cylinder at this time. Once you've finished calibrating the analyzers, Double check to be sure that the low pressure feed switch is in the off position and the regulator is at the minimum pressure setting. Press the high pressure and low pressure purge buttons to remove moisture from the system and bleed pressure that might prevent the compressor from starting up. Turn on the low pressure compressor and monitor the volume tank pressure gauge. It should reach 175 PSI. You should also hear a change in the RPMs of the compressor 
which indicates that the pressure is at the right level. Turn on the high pressure compressor and set the dial a pressure gauge for the desired fill pressure. Allow the gauge to rise to about 2000 PSI. Then crack open the valve on the unconnected fill whip to maintain a pressure of between 1500 and 2000 PSI. Confirm that the permeate oxygen analyzer is still reading 20.9%. Then turn on the membrane system by turning the low pressure feed air switch on. Adjust the feed air pressure by turning the adjustment knob on the regulator to set the pressure at 110 PSI. The heater will not turn on until the membrane system is pressurized beyond 100 PSI. The temperature of the heater ideally should be 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Check to see that the heater thermostat control green indicator light is on. This light will cycle on and off during operation. Anytime the temperature exceeds 120 degrees Fahrenheit, the green light should be off. Never change the temperature on the thermostat control unless you have been instructed to do so by Nuvair. To increase the percentage of oxygen being delivered, slowly turn the regulator knob clockwise. You should see the feed air pressure gauge increase and the permeate oxygen analyzer reading increase. Allow 5 to 8 minutes for the system to stabilize. Once this has happened, the volume tank pressure should be between 90 to 165 PSI. The regulated membrane system pressure should be 90 to 165 PSI. And the heater temperature should be between 105 and 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Wait another 3 to 5 minutes until the permeate oxygen analyzer and the fill analyzer read within 1% of each other. At this time you should make any final adjustments if necessary. The fill oxygen analyzer provides the most accurate and important reading. Due to heat, humidity, and suction in the permeate flow, the permeate oxygen analyzer drifts out of calibration and may give an incorrect reading of up to 2% of the level of oxygen. Close the bleed valve and open the cylinder valve. Watch the cylinder pressure gauge to ensure that you do not exceed the maximum fill pressure for the cylinder. The Voyager is capable of filling cylinders with air to a maximum of 4,500 pounds per square inch. Listen for the proper operation of the condensate drain every 10 to 15 minutes to be sure the system is operating properly. Regularly check to be sure that the system is operating within the recommended settings. Temperature and humidity changes may require you to recalibrate the analyzers. These should be checked every 10 to 20 minutes. Once the cylinder is full, close the cylinder valve, vent the bleed valve, and remove the cylinder from the fill station. Test the mixture in the cylinder with an independent analyzer. Be sure to record the fill date, the percentage of oxygen, and the maximum operating depth. Have the customer test the mixture in the cylinder when they pick up the tank. Make sure they sign the logbook indicating their acceptance of the fill. To use the system to pump air, turn off the low pressure compressor and low pressure feed switch. Both analyzers should be reading 20.9% oxygen, but it may take anywhere from three to five minutes for this to occur. Follow the normal procedures for filling a cylinder. Of course, if you are filling the cylinder with air, the fill O2 analyzer should read 21% plus or minus 1%. When you have finished filling tanks and the tank valves are closed, the nitrox system will automatically shut down at the pressure you set on the dial of pressure gauge. Shut off the membrane system by turning the air feed regulator knob counterclockwise. Turn off the low pressure feed air switch. When you shut the Voyager down, it will automatically bleed moisture from the low pressure filters. The gauges will show the system pressure at the time of shutdown. Before you ever deliver nitrox or air to anyone, be sure to test your system to ensure that the gas being delivered meets CGA standards. Once your system is operational, gas samples should be taken quarterly each year.